Hey, hey, a brand new episode of the Happy Productive Podcast is about to begin. It's time to be inspired by simple and actionable solutions for you and your business. If you're an established entrepreneur or just laying down the first brick of your future empire, the mantra is the same. We will flip any failure into a positive and use it to our advantage. This show is all about turning coal into diamonds with the right plan and mindset anything is possible. I'm Jennifer John, your host, business coach, and founder of Best Planner Ever. And I'm here to help you achieve all your ambitious goals. Success is closer than you think. Let's do this. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to a new episode of the Happy Productive Podcast. I know you're going to love my guest today. We were talking uh, behind the scenes and I'm like, oh, this is somebody that I could just talk to like all day long, especially about some of the fun things that I know we're going to talk about today. Welcome, Cindy Carrillo to the show today. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. I really am. Thank you. Me too, me too. And you guys, you're going to love Cindy's story because she went from working with Fortune 500 companies to buying a ranch, (laughs) buying a ranch and completely changing her whole lifestyle and founding Next Business Coaching and CC Blue Ranch. And so I'm not going to spoil it here. I'm actually going to have Cindy tell her story because that'll work. uh, That'll be so much better. Cindy, just tell us a little bit about your amazing story and how you ended up to be where you are today. Oh, I appreciate it. You know, I was a businesswoman. I was an entrepreneur. And I ended up starting after a number of business experiences. I ended up starting my own company back in the 1980s, long time ago. Uh And I started the business because there was a problem that I recognized as an individual, as a parent, as, you know, as most of us do when we start, when we start our own businesses. And I started a business that was trying to fill a need about caregiving, where so many women were going back into the workforce that there was a need, a requirement for corporations, for businesses to really address the full life of an employee, not just, you know, you're a worker, then you go home and you deal with work, then you come back and, you know, deal with your family. No, it really started to bleed together. So I started a company called Work Options Group which worked with corporations around helping employees balance their work in their personal lives. Mm -hmm. And we did caregiving and we developed a national network of providers to go into the home, to take care of children, adults, parents, even pets at one point. It was amazing. Then there was a breakdown in caregiving so that somebody who worked for these companies could actually be productive and reduce absenteeism and increase recruitment opportunities for the businesses. And it was successful. It took a long time, but it was successful. And it built the company over some 20 odd years and loved it. Loved every minute of it. Loved leading the business. Loved making shit up. Loved creating things and building this this national network and these relationships with these businesses that I got to tell you, I just thought, there's no way. There's no way I'm going to work with Microsoft or Merrill Lynch or Prudential, you know, any of these big companies and universities and the Mayo Clinic. And it was so exciting and so much fun to work with the people that we brought into the company. And after 21 some odd years, I started to realize that it really wasn't for me to continue to take the business forward. Mm -hmm. That a lot of entrepreneurs and founders, there comes a time when you kind of uh, outlive the company and the company needs something different than mm-hmm. what you can offer it to move forward. And I hit that point in my life and was at a really interesting crossroads where I was asking myself, what's next? And it took a while before I was able to really grapple with and make the decision that it was okay to let my baby go and to let it thrive and to let it move on. And that it was okay to do something else because we get ourselves into this place of, well, this is what I've always done. Therefore, this is what I should be doing. So I decided to sell the company 
and put the company up for sale, which was an extraordinary experience to really tell the story of the growth and the evolution of the company and to shine a light on my people and the, the services that we were able to create and the differences that we were able to make. And, and, and someone bought it, which was really remarkable. When we went through a competitive bid process, five big companies were interested in buying us. Wow. Which, I got to tell you, if there's any level of satisfaction for what you've done for over 20 years, yeah. it's probably that. Yeah. And really ended up hand choosing, like picking the company that we wanted because it was the best culture fit and it was the best business fit. Then I found myself in a situation where I was like, okay, now I could start another company or I could retire. And that was kind of the easy answer. I was in my mid fifties and people would say, okay, what are you going to do next? What are you going to do next? Why they were interested? I don't know, but they were interested (laughs) and I didn't have an answer. So I kind of, I guess, just gave the easy answer, which was a woman of my age after doing that sort of thing was, I guess I'll retire. But every time I said it, I kind of put air quotes around it. Like literally my fingers would go up and I would put the air quotes around it. So I knew that I wasn't done working. I knew that I wanted to do something really different with my life. So I had the time. I had the opportunity and I had the resources. So I thought, I, I think I'll, I think I'll move to the country. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> why I was thinking that. But I recalled, um, I don't know, maybe it was an old dream. I know it was an old dream. Where I come down, I live in Colorado. And when I first moved to Colorado when I was 19, I took a road trip with my best friend, Nancy. And we drove throughout the state. And we hit this one part of the state where my mind just exploded. I saw mountains that I think reminded me of the sound of music when I was little in the Alps. And and this place was actually called the Little Switzerland of America. And I was like, yes, I'm hooked. And I remember being 19 and saying to Nancy out loud in the car, one day, one day I will be here. Yeah. And then, yeah, life takes over. Right. And raised a family, raised a business. And I think I forgot that dream until I found my place, myself in this time and space, in this time and space. And I got in the car and came back down to this part of the state and thought, I think I want to, I think maybe this is it. This is the time. And found a 35 acre piece of property with nothing on it except for pasture. Oh my goodness. But it had the most magnificent views you've ever been able to see of the mountains, of the Rocky Mountains. And I fell in love and decided this was the start of something totally new. So we started from the ground up and built a whole new life, built a whole new life on a ranch. Wow. I, I know right where you are because years and years ago. So my oldest daughter, she just turned 25 yesterday. And when she was, uh, gosh, you had to have been four-ish, four or five years old. So 20 years ago, her and I, I got this, this idea. So at the time I lived in Nevada and I had a software company. And so my daughter is young and I got this like idea that I wanted to buy a guest ranch. And so I took my little one and we took a 10 day road trip and we flew to Durango, Colorado. And then we, we drove through Colorado. We drove through Wyoming, Idaho, and we ended up, we went through Montana. We ended up somewhere and flew home from there, but we took a 10 day trip just all through. And I remember there was this day we we're driving through Colorado and we come to this just like jaw dropping, stunningly gorgeous. I'm like, where are we? And you're like winding down the canyon. And there's these just stunning mountains. And later I went and I looked it up and it was little Switzerland. And I'm like, man, like, they are not kidding. Like it was some of the most beautiful, beautiful country that I've ever been in. And a a couple of years ago, we had my daughter 
had, had worked at Brockenridge Ski Resort. And so we, again, went out for Christmas because it was our first Christmas away from the family. And so we, we all went to her and, um, but we ended up again, drive doing a drive through Colorado. And if you've never driven through Colorado, like there is so much just gorgeous jaw dropping, beautiful, beautiful scenery. So I'm not even, I'm not surprised at all that you're like, this is it. Cause it's just, it's really so beautiful. And it's not like I wasn't living in a gorgeous place to begin with. I was outside of Boulder and it, Colorado's gorgeous. So you can't really go wrong, but wow, this was, this was something elevated. This was something even more, even more. Awesome. So you've got the property, you, you've got this next chapter. And so what did you decide to then do with the next chapter of your life? So I decided that, you know, I kind of had a five-year plan Mm because I was pretty settled in Boulder. Family, friends, community, the works, right? Been years. But I thought, let's let's start something new. So the first thing was to carve out of this land an area where you want to live and design how you want to live, which was a really interesting process to go through. Mm-hmm. And I, instead of saying, I'm going to build a house and mm-hmm. it's going to have four bedrooms, two baths, blah, 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 you know, and it's going to be of this style. Instead, I started to ask, how do I want to live? Oh, Which was very different than yeah. I've ever had the opportunity to do in my past. Yeah. So when I started to ask how I wanted to live, it became a different exercise of designing a life mm-hmm. and a lifestyle. So sustainability was a big deal. Sharing the property and sharing this lifestyle, having animals, but having a great garden and living off the land ish, Mm -hmm. like, you know, had this romantic vision of what homesteading was. Now I'm also kind of at a point in my life where I'm embracing my princess side. Oh, yeah of life are not going away, <laughs> you know, so it's that ish again yeah. with your quotes, let's be real, you know, yeah. so building a home that was going to sort of expand and contract. So when my partner, Matthew and I were going to step into this, we knew we wanted to share this because the views, the life, the gorgeousness of everything that's here, we were going to build it in such a way that they would come. Yeah, and, and share it. And we knew that our life was going to come down here. Mm-hmm. And the five-year plan turned into a three-year plan that turned into a basically one and a half year plan where I was like, we spent four months here after the house was built. And the thought, what, what, why not? Why yeah. not? Change? Why not really step into it? And over the course of the next five, six, seven years, we were able to slowly, methodically, and very intentionally develop the lifestyle behind what was the vision at the beginning. So built a barn, brought in farm animals. So I've got the cutest little goats and pigs and chickens. We've got cows, very nice boutique looking cows that have, they're black with a white stripe on them. They look amazing on the pasture. We have miniature horses and miniature donkeys because I envisioned and wanted the interaction. I'm not a horsewoman. I'm an animal person. So it was about caregiving and it was about really sharing access to these animals with our guests. And um, whether or not they be family or friends, yeah. or we ended up even starting an Airbnb here. We built a guest house and we did that because people were not going to drop by for yeah. dinner because we're six hours yeah. on, on the drive away from our friends and family. Yeah. So people were going to come and stay for a few days. So right. we didn't build that into the whole lifestyle that we were developing. And I needed to learn how to do this life. I've never had farm animals. I mean, I'm a nice suburban girl. Yeah. You know, I was the CEO of a company. So I traded all those suits and high heels for cowboy boots and, you know, jeans and overalls and not be happier doing all of that. But I got to tell you, lots of trial and error, lots of trying to figure it out. This was 
not something that I had really any hardcore experience doing before yeah. we looked into it. So wow. really needed to learn along the way. Oh my goodness. Wow, wow, wow. I love this so much. Um, I am a I am a country girl and have been my whole life. I have horses. I have two. But I just, I love land. I love the animals. I love all of those things. And as you were talking about trading in the high heels, I traded in my high heels quite a few years ago. It was just like, my feet hurt in these. I'm not wearing them anymore. <laughs> Done. And, you know, a good pair of muck boots, it's, it's yeah. shocking. But like, you know, I'll take a good pair of muck boots <laughs> over, uh, yeah, over my heels any day, any yeah. day. So I love this. And I love that you created the guest house so that you could share it. Yeah. And I believe that you guys are also doing um, retreats or like Thank an you. experience where now people can actually come in and they can work with you in your coaching. And so yes. tell us, tell us a little bit about that and what that looks like. No, I appreciate that. You know, when we moved here and as I said earlier, I wasn't done working yeah. and figuring out how to work differently and how to incorporate all of my experience and my past and my knowledge and all of that in terms of business and life because life comes along the way. Oh, yeah. You know, early on in my career, I went and got a master's degree in social work mm. and used that more than you can imagine in running a business. And we were a service business with employees, with clients, with, you know, users of our program. And I think having that, that social work background, that people oriented background was incredibly valuable. Mm. And had no idea it would come back and be so useful at this level of my career. Yeah. But when I looked at how do I, how do I work again and how do I use what I have? Coaching became ugh, kind of the duh, the, mm -hmm. this yeah. I can do. I've been yeah. a mentor and a coach my whole life. Yeah. So coaching from the ranch took the first form as phone. Zoom, all of that. It was like, I can do it from here and yeah. work with people and have the life that I want to live and design it in a way that I want to work and then offer people the kind of service and value that they could, they could use. That was great. But for years, I kept thinking, how do, how do I really capitalize on the ranch and on the lifestyle that we've created and on the environment that we live in? Because it's magical and right. it's eye-opening and there's a lot of sky and there's something that happens when you've got a lot of sky yeah. and yeah. when there's when it's dark dark at night and there aren't a lot of city sounds and you can open up and you can relax and you can dig in to what's next much easier when you get out of your current reality and do something go somewhere to explore right. and look internally so yeah. we open up the ranch to that and we did it in a unique way, and we call it the immersion to find your next, because mm -hmm. Matthew's a fabulous cook. So we bring people, um, put them up in our guest house, which is gorgeous, and they work with me for two days. Matthew does all the cooking for them, for us. It's uh -huh. awesome. We, may, we eat a lot of farm fresh things, food that we've raised, things that are locally grown. And we spend time together here at the ranch, helping, helping people really get through the blocks and the reasons that they might be stuck, the, the paralysis that often comes with change, mm -hmm. because either we just don't know what to do next because there's lots of opportunity or yeah. we think there's not enough. And I, so I only work with individuals, couples, or business partners because I found that there are many, many group opportunities for coaching that offer a very different experience, very valid experiences, but ones that you're in a group, it's a very different setting and a right. very different opportunity to learn, learn from others. This is much more of an opportunity to go inside yeah. and have more of a guided immersion into What's blocking you? What are the opportunities? How do we really find the path to yeah. move forward into your next? 
And my clients range in age now who come here from their 30s on up to someone who might be facing retirement. Yeah. Because yeah. At different phases of our lives. I mean, someone in their right. 30s could be working already for 12, 15 years. Yeah. And they come out and they look around and they go, oh, okay, is this it? <laughs> what do I do next? And I hope we have many nexts right, right, in right. our life. I mean, I have. And that was the process that I went through of really reinventing myself and really stepping into this next major phase of my life. Yeah. Help me out in that process. Yeah, I love this. You bring up so many good things. And I'm going to go back for a second to one of the things that you said that when people can come out to the ranch, you're getting out of that day to day environment. And we started doing retreats. It's been several years now. And now we do two a year where we do we go somewhere else. But my five year dream as my team knows in five years, it's my ranch, my horse ranch that I will bring people to to do this work. Because our company, our coaching is transforming you and your business from the inside out. So we're in alignment here with like how we do this work because it definitely always starts on the inside. But I love what you said about, you know, you're getting out of your day-to-day environment. Um, For you, they're coming out to the ranch, the big sky, nature, the animals. When you put yourself in a whole different environment, I I really believe, at least from what I've seen with our clients and myself personally, that like if I want to create, design the biggest and best life and business, I need to put myself in an environment that feels really good. And sometimes yeah. when we're in that day-to-day slog of just like blah, 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 you know, the same thing day in, day out it can be hard to tap into that creativity and my heart and where I really want to be. And so this is why we take our business owners twice a year to some beautiful, you know, we go to Costa Rica, we're going on a Caribbean cruise, we're next year, we're going to Alaska, like we're doing all these things. And it's the same concept. And that's why I love so much that you brought it up. Because you really do need to get out of your day to day and be in a space in as much nature as possible, I believe, like be out in as much nature as you can to do that really deep, deep transformative work. And I love that that's what you've you've brought in so that people can have this really transformative experience and it needs to it needs to be in a beautiful location, not on Zoom, <laughs> not on the not on the phone. Yeah. And I think there's some thought process and there's some yeah. indi- individual time that's required and some, there's a process to change. And yeah. that's what we're talking about, isn't it? I mean, yeah. transformation is change and change is difficult and change mm-hmm. is scary. And change is something that oftentimes we get stuck in trying to figure out how to make it happen because yeah. we think If we've done it one way, that's the way moving forward. And it's hard to, as you said, get creative on your own. It's difficult to do these kinds of transformations. And they can be even small ones. Something little's getting in your way, but it feels really big. And it feels insurmountable because when we're in our heads, We have the voices that got us there to begin with. And there's nothing challenging those voices. And when you work with somebody as a coach or you go to a retreat and you're around other people or you have a guide who's helping you move through that process, there's some challenge to the status quo. And I think that's one of the values of coaching in general and for something like this, doing an immersion. Yeah, agree completely. So talk to me about your book. How did the book come in, play into all of this fabulous rediscovering yourself? You know, it was one of those things that I've had in the back of my mind as those life goals. You yeah. know, oh, I'd love to write a book. I had no idea. And there have been times throughout my life where I thought maybe that could be it. Maybe that could yeah. be it. But nothing really meaty enough and and really poignant, important enough. When I went through this change, when I stepped into this next, and I really intentionally looked at the process, I realized that one, I'm not alone. 
that yeah. process that I went with might be unique because I was building a ranch and I had never done anything like this before. And I was messing it up all along the way. So there were lots yeah. of funny stories along the way. But the lessons learned behind the story, I think all of a sudden I was able to visualize. I think, again, this is something to share. And that concept of sharing from the first day standing on this land and looking out there and seeing the view and the pastures laid out in front of me and really just the opportunity to do something so different than I'd ever done before and create it from the ground up. I knew that that whole experience could be shared. I didn't yeah. know ultimately that 10 years later it was going to become a book. But books come out because you kind of have no choice, I think. Yeah. That, I mean, there are some people who could probably write a book because it's good for them to do it or it's good for their business to do it. This came from that sharing kind of mentality. If I could do it, if I could go through this process, if I could outline the process, identify the steps, the, the thoughts that you have to go through, the intentionality to step into the next phase of your life. And that was something that others could learn from and repeat and internalize and personalize themselves. That would be worth the time and effort to do it. And one yeah. of the concepts of finding your next for me at this phase of my life was if I was going to take the time and make the effort to do it, it should be important. It should be worthwhile. It should yeah. be something. And so that was part of the book. I think, I think I could do this and make it something. I just finished recording the audio book. And it'll come oh, out in on. August. And I just wrote a workbook to go along with it. And that'll come out in August. So it's sort of taken on this life. And yeah. I love it. And it's given a framework to my coaching in a very different way. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that so much. Right when I was starting my coaching practice, I came out with my planner, best planner ever, and I started using I it with that. coaching clients. Yeah. And since then, um, I just actually just dropped my second book, um, The Apple Stand, to help business owners who are feeling overwhelmed, burned out, and just kind of like hating that business. Yeah. But I love how it can be incorporated and used into the coaching as a tool for your coaching. So, so exciting that you're coming out with the workbook. Book. Yay, you just finished the audio. Yay. So One of the things that you said that I, it really resonates with me is that as you built this, like you designed this next phase of your life, yeah. but I love that you did it very intentionally and very methodically, because I think so often as business owners, at least I've very much experienced this like hurry, hurry, rush, rush. We yeah. got to get to that next place. We got to get it done. We just had a new client that came in and she's like, we got to get this done fast, fast, fast. And it's just like, wait, you need to slow down a second here. <clears throat> and in the same breath, it's like, you know, I'm working from, from this overwhelm and feel like I'm scattered all over the place. Well, and it's like, well, you are, <laughs> and you, yes. you are, and you are. And so if you don't want to be that anymore, we've got to work on changing. And of course we're working on that with her, but I love how you just very intentionally and methodically designed this new, new chapter, and then you built it. And as you were telling the story, it didn't feel rushed and hurried and we cut corners and, and also like, Yes, of course, we're going to make mistakes along the way. But I think that so often when we're just going at 100 miles an hour, we tend to make a lot more mistakes. We tend yeah. to not take the time to really know, well, what do I really want? And then it actually sets us back and costs us so much more time because we didn't just really take that time for ourselves to get clear, really figure out what we really want and then build it with intention. Yes. And I think a lot of business owners... Uh, find themselves. I did it one phase in my own company where we do get overwhelmed, where we've started a company where we're used to doing everything on our own. And there are different phases and next steps within building a business the same way that I went through building a ranch and building right. the next phase of my life. So there's so many applicable lessons 
to that I took from building a business to building this next phase of my life, step by step. And as I work with coaching clients in helping them understand that businesses evolve the way lives evolve and that there should be next steps and next stages and next phases of our life and our business. And when we run businesses, we own businesses, we should be very conscious and intentional about how to marry the two together. Because why bother otherwise? If it's your business, don't you want to design your business for the lifestyle that you want to live? Not the other way around. We don't want our businesses to run our lives. And how many of us start businesses where that ends up happening and it becomes a runaway train when really what our intention was at the very start was to start a business that was going to be meaningful and work for us. Yeah. Oh, I love this so much. We're running out of time, but before we go, okay, I have to ask, I know there's people that are listening to this and they're all going, yes, and yes, I want to design my business and design my life. Yes. But then the next thing is, oh shit, now how, how do I do this? Right. How do I do this? So what would you suggest as like a first next step? I always love in this podcast to give people practical, tactical things that they can do to act right away that don't cost money at all. That just right. things like what is a next action step? So for that person who's like, yes, I want to design my business and my life to fit me. What would you suggest as like a next step to get started, get them going in the right direction? I think one of the traps we fall into is that we get very tactical very early on. We go to the how. How will I? How will I? And I like to back everybody up and suggest, start with the why. Start with the why. And start with what's most important to you. Why are you running this company? And what is it that you're trying to build? And why? What are the reasons behind it? And what's the bigger picture? And then you can start to develop the criteria for how you can make decisions about how to move this way or that way. We need a checklist of criteria for decision making. Mm -hmm. And when we start with the very small tactical steps, we get mired in the details and we forget to ask ourselves about the design process, the why, yeah. the what's yeah. important to us as the business owners. So what are we doing? Why are you doing it? What are you trying right. to accomplish? What are the four or five most important things to you about how and why you work and why you're doing this business? And if you can really distill down to four, five, or six reasons for that, Then you start to have a list for decision making where we can avoid the shiny object syndrome of which I am a pro. I love, (laughs) I, I, I will go off on tangents if I'm not clear. Yeah. And criteria for decision making, what's important to me and why makes my life clear. And I can avoid the pitfalls and avoid the distractions if I can define a clear path. Yes, yes. And I love this so much. Um, Often in our coaching, when we get a business owner who's just like, they're so stuck in the thinking of it, I'll explain this is not a thinking, you don't think your way out of this. This is a feeling your way out of this. And I think that when you do start to connect with your why, you're opening up your heart, you're really connecting to your feelings, how you, what you really, really want, like those deepest desires, what's motivating you, and feeling your way through this. Sometimes people are just like, what, Jennifer, what? I'm like, look, it's a feeling your way through this, not always a thinking your way through this. And I think that's often why if you can get out of your day to day, go to the ranch, go go visit Cindy on her ranch or, you know, come out to one of our retreats and get out into, you know, one of these beautiful locations where you're out in nature, you're having this beautiful experience I think in that kind of an environment, at least for me, it's easier to kind of connect with those deeper things. My why, what's really important, 
when I'm kind of out of that day to day. But I love that you're just like, take a step back take before step. you get busy yeah. and really take that time to feel your way through this, really figure out your values, what's important to you. And then you've got your priorities. And then from there, you can start to now design your business and your life. And using that. all of those logical, rational, yeah. real kinds of things. And um, as a close, I, I think what you're describing and it goes to is the head, the heart and the gut. And yeah. when those three are in alignment, I do think we need to use our brains and use our experience, use our knowledge and talk about money and talk about the real stuff. Yes. And why, why behind that means more and has more context than you do your gut check. And am yeah. I off? Am I, am I feeling yucky? Am I, are there red flags just flapping in my face and, and just causing red marks all over me? Pay attention. You know, yeah. when all of that is calm and all of that is aligned, right. well, then you know. Look out. Then you know. Out. Now you go. Now you go. That's right. And you're oh, clear. I love it. And you're clear. I agree 100%. Because right now, when you've got all those things in alignment, and now you take action, now you get busy in the doing, the whole thing just manifests, right, so beautifully, and you know, you're on the right track, and it just all feels so good, versus just, you know, pushing things around all the time and feeling like, wait, I'm not going anywhere. I just love and I love that you mentioned the gut too, the the gut brain, right? Because we do we have a whole a whole nother mind in there our with tools. our gut and our intentions. We gotta, use, yeah. our tools. We gotta yeah. use our tools. And as leaders of companies, it's incumbent upon us to use our tools right. and to make decisions and to lead forward. And so those are the things that people usually need conversations with someone who's outside, objective, and yet has their best interest in mind. Yeah, agree completely. Oh, Cindy, such a great conversation. Will you please just tell everybody where they can find you? Where can they buy your book? Where do they go to get information if they want to visit you at the ranch? Just uh, tell everybody where they can find you. You know, I decided to keep everything very simple. So the book is called Finding Your Next, but NXT is how I spell next. So Finding Your Next, capital N-X-T. And my website finding your next nxt.com and there's contact for me there and it talks about the immersion and the book is available on Amazon and wherever you buy your books and the audiobook will be coming out at the beginning of August along with the workbook and it's fun stories and lessons it's pigs and goats and chickens and cows and how we became canning and, you know, becoming a totally different life, but doing it intentionally and using everything that I had learned up until the point where I decided to become a ranch girl. Nice. Oh, I love it so much. And guys who are listening, we'll put all this information in the show notes as well. You can always go visit happyproductivepodcast.com for Cindy's episode and you'll see everything there in the show notes. Cindy, thank you so much for being here with me today. This was such a lovely, lovely conversation. It's a pleasure. It was a pleasure talking with you. And I love your book and I love your planner. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you guys, that's it for today. I know you had some great, great takeaways from today's episode. Now, remember, now you got to do something with it. So don't just sit on it. You got to take action and you got to do something with it. That's it for today's show. Get out there and have a happy, productive day, y'all. Bye. I hope you found today's episode of the Happy Productive Podcast inspiring. Every successful business is formed by a set of small, consistent, and attainable steps. If you want to learn more, come visit us at jenniferdawncoaching.com to take your next step and learn how to meet your business goals. On our website, you're going to find free resources along with links to the life-changing coaching programs that have transformed the lives of so many of our clients, including the Coaching Academy and and our unbreakable retreats. Many of them started their journey by listening to this podcast. That's it. Thank you for listening and stay tuned for our next episode. Mm-hmm.